Hi everyone, it's Tim Gaiash, and today I want to do a new video on Hashimoto's thyroiditis as well as enlargement of the thyroid. Uh, I'd really like to show you guys the signs of both of these. And I, on YouTube, I get a lot of uh, cynical people who question the reality of this first part that I'm going to show you, and this is in re regards to Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In people with Hashimoto's, Unless the Hashimoto's is in remission, you're always going to see this. Right here and right here. You'll notice here on her left eye, you see much more of the upper eyelid than you see here on her right eye. That always occurs. There's always one eye for which there's much more visible eyelid. That is typical. Unless this is something that's occurred since they were a child and just part of their natural and genetic symmetry. Uh, if this is to occur later in life, Think about Hashimoto's. Think about getting tested your thyroid antibodies. So what we're looking at here is one eye or the other. Actually, more often than not, it is actually the right eye. Uh, but in her case, it is, the, it is the left eye. And she has confirmed Hashimoto's. So we have more exposed upper eyelid, right upper eyelid. Sorry, that's her left upper eyelid uh, than her right upper eyelid. Sorry, I, the left and rights are getting me here. This is a sign of Hashimoto's. If it's something that's a late onset, not something that you had as a child and, and grew, you just grew up with it that way. If it comes on later in life, think about your thyroid, especially with women who about 82% of you are going to wind up with thyroid dysfunction at some point in your life. So that's the first sign to look at on the human face. Now here we have a greatly enlarged thyroid. This is highly inflamed. There are nodules present and if this was anybody else because I, I know that she's taking care of it, she's under constant physician care, lots of scans going on to see what's, what's happening. There's no cancer here. If I saw this on anybody else, I have to admit I'm just being honest with you that one of the first things that I would think about would be cancer, would be a cancerous thyroid. Not the case here, just wildly an enlarged thyroid. You, you see this a lot more in people with Graves' disease, will we'll have the greatly enlarged thyroid. Uh, it's, al it's also something that can occur in Hashimoto's as well, and this is a perfect, perfect example of that. So we're seeing the enlarged thyroid. Uh, this is what it's going to look like from the side. And let's go to the last photo. And here we have the thyroid. This is where the thyroid sits. This would be her left lobe of her thyroid, her right lobe of the thyroid. And what you want to take notice of are these lines. And you'll notice that there's two lines here. There's two lines here. When you get to here, it spreads out. Notice how it's spread out? It's just basically one thick, deep line. It's spread because the thyroid, the enlarged thyroid from inside of the body is pushing out on the skin and stretching the skin, stretching it wider and stretching out the wrinkle, crease, line, whatever you would like to call it. That's what's occurring here. here. That is one of the signs to look for. Head to the mirror if you want. Look for yourself. Check your own thyroid. Look at your loved ones. You'll see it as well. These are three considerations of thyroid disease. In this case, it's Hashimoto's, but it might just be an enlarged thyroid. It might be Graves' disease in, the, in this issue. In this particular case, if we look, we look at this, it could be any of the three. So we have Graves and Hashimoto's as uh, the autoimmune syndromes or diseases, uh, thyroid diseases. And then there's just hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Uh, the enlargement of a thyroid can occur in any one of those four issues. Uh, but I want to talk just very briefly. If you have autoimmune thyroid condition, which means Graves or Hashimoto's, think about a DNA and RNA SAR code. 4C potency, get it from your local homeopath. Those are the only people going to have it. You may have a hard time finding them call around, see who has SAR codes. You want, if you can get a 3C, that would be awesome. 3C potency, kind of hard to find, very hard to find. 4C potency would be perfect. 5C would be functional. 
Uh, the reason that you want that is because if we can attack the DNA or RNA as it is recycling, and your body recycles DNA over a three DNA and RNA over a three-year term or course, uh, each and every day, your body has uh, 100 strands of, or sorry, 1 million strands of DNA, DNA uh, that die and rebuild every single day. But it takes three years for the entire and full body to cycle all of your DNA, all of the DNA that's in your body. DNA and RNA star codes don't care who's treating you, don't care what they have. It's not going to interfere with it. This is DNA and RNA only. Um, you use DNA and RNA star codes. It's the only way you're going to truly find remission in Hashimoto's. I don't know of any other way that it that, that truly works. There are some diets that claim they are. They will, but anyway, that's it for now. See you next time. Bye-bye.